so hello guys uh this is Lou Perez and I'm, I'm going to be talking just for a few minutes about Ukraine uh, in the middle of this series I'm doing because uh, though I'm in the middle of a series, I don't want to be tone deaf to what is happening in the world. And we're so um, grieved in our hearts. The whole world is grieved, whether you are right, left, liberal, conservative, whether you are a believer in Christ or not, this has got to bother you. And uh, the fact that the whole world has arisen uh, and, you know, Thank, thank you, Mr. Putin, for um, for uh, solidifying NATO by, by your comments. But I want to read a couple of things to you today about Ukraine that, that I care about because I've, I've spent a lot of time there and I've been there at least five times and for different projects we did. And um, and we helped uh, to, to start and form a seminary and, and write a technology program for them many years ago. And so my heart was left there in Ukraine and I really feel like like... Um, I met so many incredible people there, so many people that are just kind and humble and loved God and uh, just in different walks of life. The culture is great. The food is great. The people are wonderful. But uh, Christianity Today has been putting out a lot of good stuff on Ukraine, and I want to read some of it. And some of it goes something like this. Um, some Russian pastors are saying this, there is only one source of comfort in all of this for me. He wrote, Christ is on the throne. God the Father holds everything. In his hands, the Holy Spirit fills the hearts of those who trust in him, and nothing can overcome his might. God does the greatest work of redemption when everything seems hopeless. I pray for peace. And uh, another one, um, and his first name is uh, uh, Yev Yevgevny, but I cannot pronounce his last name. Another pastor, he said, My soul is grieved, my heart is torn with horror and shame. And my mind is shocked by human insanity. This is, and he's the pastor of, of a Bible church in Moscow. And he says, we are not politicians. We are children of God. We are not called to remake the geopolitical map of the world to please this, uh, to, to please this or that ruler. And uh, he goes on to say, but because they have become, a, um, uh, we, we are called to be believers in Christ. And so there are so many people on both sides, because we, we need to remember not to pray just for Ukraine, but to pray for Russia, uh, because there are 700 churches in Russia that are standing together with the churches in Ukraine, and they're praying together. And I'll give you a couple more, but other churches focused on uh, solidarity and prayer. And of course, uh, I want to, again, give credit to whom credit is due. This is an article uh, printed from Christianity Today. Across Russia, the uh, 700 churches within 26 Protestant unions that compose the All-Russia Commonwealth of Evangelical Christians jointly declared a time of prayer and fasting for peace, uh, said uh, Pavel uh, Kalishnikov. I, I think I got it right. but um, And this is what they're praying. This, this was their prayer agenda, these 700 churches. For peace between the fraternal peoples of Russia and Ukraine. That's number one. Number two for the authorities and rulers to have the fear of God, strength and will for peacemaking. Number three, for the safety of the peoples of Ukraine as well as Christians living in Ukraine in places of armed conflict. Number four, for the church that God may preserve it from divisions and conflicts amid the aggravated situation, understanding how every association of churches can respond to the needs of people affected by, and, and that was number five, actually. Um, number five was understanding how every associated, association of, of churches can respond to the needs of, of people affected by warfare. So th these are some of the things. And uh, in, in Ukraine, some pastors are saying, you know, pray, serve, and resist. This is what, this is their, their rubric that, that they're under right now. But this is an amazing thing. And in the sense of that when there's crisis, when there is struggle, when there is doubt, when there is uh, uh, just a seemingly, a seemingly hopeless intimidator, you know, a, a great Goliath just looming over a small David, watch carefully what God does, how that his kingdom begins to emerge and how a spirit of prayer begins to come upon people. Um, I know people who never pray, who are suddenly praying. They're saying, God, you got to help those people and help me while I'm at it because it makes people look up to the creator uh, who made us and, 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 and to quote 
the, the famous scripture that, that is being quoted by some of the Russian churches, why do the nations rage and imagine a vain thing? Because this is what's happening now. From a vain idea, from an empty idea that has no real substance, uh, one ruler is trying to dominate another nation. And so we stand with our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. And I remember friends of mine that, that I have connected with through the years that are just incredible people there who, who are strong Christians. We stand with you. We love you. And we want God and his best to work on your behalf. And we pray your protection. We pray that there will be a minimal loss of life. So I, I, I just want you to, to put that out there, everybody, that, that God is, is working whether we realize it or not. And with that, I'm going to you know, uh, I'll just continue the series that I've been doing, but I just want to put that out to you guys, that, that God is working in a mighty way, and He's going to continue to work. So God bless you guys.